Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapsed version of Mac the Westie in Bluebells. This is done in soft pastel. I have lots of full-length tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but if you like those then do check me out over on Patreon where you'll find my full catalogue of tutorials showing you all sorts of different subject matter. But I hope you enjoy this. As always, I make a start with the background and you can see from my photo reference, it's a beautiful picture of Mac sitting in amongst the bluebells and long grasses. And my client asked if I could add some extra bluebells into the mix to add a bit more vibrance. So you'll see later on that I, I do add extra bluebells into the foreground. I've also got to remove the harness that Mac is wearing. So a few edits to do on this. I also wanted to take a little bit of the detail out of the distant background. And this is something that I love to do, creating a bit of depth with that soft focus and bringing our attention more to Mac the Westie, who it's really all about. And by making that background just behind Mac's head a little more blurry, a little more out of focus, hopefully that will really help Mac pop out from the picture. So I spent a long time working on the grass and also trying to create a bit of a blurry effect in the background, hoping that when I add the grass in the foreground and my in-focus bluebells, that it will really tie the whole effect together. So when I'm working on these backgrounds, I really have to trust that it will, it will come together later on. They don't always look so great while I'm working on them. And I'm working on Hanamul Velour Pastel Paper for this project. It's the light yellow. And I often use that particular colour of velour for white animals. I like the warmth that it gives. But it's not too far away from white. So where I need actual white to show up, it shows up really well on this paper. But for the majority of Mac himself, I really had to limit my use of white. You can see that Mac is actually sitting in the shadow. And there's really only one bit of sunlight catching him and that's down that left side of his shoulder, down the left side of his body, right down to his paw, well, his right paw. But on his face and his body, I really couldn't justify any use of the colour pure white. And it's all subtle tints, some warm tints, some cool tints with hints of lilac in it, but really avoiding the colour white as much as possible. And it's so difficult to do when you're painting a white dog, I just kept wanting to pick up the white pastel to lighten areas and add highlights. But I really made myself stop and think about the color that I was actually seeing. So many subtle tints on a white dog. If you're just starting out in pastel and your color choice is quite limited, one range of color I would suggest adding onto your collection pretty soon is some light tints. You're going to find it really difficult uh, to add highlights that add depth to your painting if you've only really got white to work with. So it's always my advice to avoid white as much as possible. Look for all the other colors you see reflected on there. Try and broaden the range of tones that you use. Also with Mac's tongue, he had quite a lot of saliva on the end of that tongue. But that was easy enough to remove. I just ignored it in the painting process. Picking up some of those lovely purples that I've used in the bluebells. Tying a bit of the background colour into Mac himself. 
And it's always good to pick out some of the colors that you've used in the background. If you can find a way of using those in your main subject, you'll create much better color harmony in the piece. So moving on down, I've got Max's face finished. I often take a break from backgrounds about halfway through, as soon as I get enough background in behind the face so that I can spend a day or two working on the animal themselves. Then I come back to this background pretty fresh. It's quite a long slog working on something like this. There's just so much to look at. Luckily, this piece wasn't too big so it wasn't as, as difficult as some of my previous challenges with bluebells and grasses. But it still takes a long time. And I continue to work on down Mac's body. I've got some other photos of him to give me an idea of what the hair on his chest does. But I've also decided to bring some bluebells in from the sides and overlap Mac a little, just to plant him a little better, make him seem like he's really springing out from the undergrowth. And I use some of my previous photo references of bluebells that I've had to work on. And I pick out some individual stems try and make them work within the composition, create some overlaps, have them weave their way out through the grass like they really would. But each area takes quite a long time just focusing on smaller sections, bite size I call them because it, it just makes the whole task seem a bit less daunting when you focus on one area for a while. Most of the grass I've pretty much followed the photo reference but a lot of it I'm sort of using artistic license. But those main strands of grass that come from the bottom right corner. I really liked those. I really liked how they come up and overlap Mac's leg. So you can see that I, I really have used a lot of those actual leaves from the photo reference. But then there's also quite a lot that I've got to make up. And I'm using a variety of photo references for that, having a look back through any photos where I've painted bluebells from before. Of course, it's always much easier when the photo reference is exactly how you want the painting to look. But I also enjoy the challenge of changing photo references, working with them, using their best elements. But then, as an artist, you have that license to make it even better. You can improve compositions, improve colour. And hopefully, by the end, you'll have something that's much richer and nicer than the original photo. So it always feels good to reach the final corner, especially on something like this, with a lot of confusing leaves and grasses. Not my favorite thing to paint in the world, I really have to focus and stay patient, not rush. So I hope that you've enjoyed this time-lapse version. Be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube for all my future free content and also check me out over on Patreon for my full catalogue of tutorials and lots more. I try to cover a different subject matter each month and next month it's all about painting flowers so expect to see some more of this piece in particular with real-time footage and a full-length tutorial. Thanks for watching.